Number one, Carolina monster mayfly. You may have heard of the giant mayfly, Hexagenia limbata, which is quite common on the east coast of the United States. These can grow as long as 1.2 inches, making most mayflies look tiny by comparison. They are often used by fishermen as bait. Hexagenia limbata is itself dwarfed, however, by Calabatus giganticus, the Carolina monster mayfly. While most members of this genus are known for being smaller than average, most notably Calabatus picta, the small minnow mayfly, Calabatus giganticus often grows to a length of four inches, including the cerci, and preserved specimens exist in collections that are as much as five inches long. Stories of individuals that were six or seven inches long are probably exaggerations, but fossils of the genus Calabatus indicate that in the past, most species were much larger on the average than the currently extant species, so you might actually have found such individuals if you were alive 30 million years ago. Number two, literate cuttlefish? Cuttlefish of the species Sapia officinalis have long been known for their amazing ability to change the color and texture of their skin. This can be done for purposes of camouflage to hide from predators and prey as a kind of communication with other cuttlefish to attract mates or intimidate rivals, and they can even hypnotize their prey with dazzling displays that make them stop and stare. In some cases, they seem to do it for no reason other than simple amusement. Recently, however, in a startling and somewhat disturbing development, they have tailored their talents for confrontations with human divers. When they feel threatened by a human diver, they suddenly display spots that resemble the word die. This startles the diver, who is often so disturbed by the display that they decide to terminate the dive. It is not clear how this practice first started, but it seems to have spread through imitation. The cuttlefish who have mastered this technique tend to live longer in areas with human hunters, and because the cuttlefish around them are safer, they have a higher status, and males are more successful at mating. Will they learn to make other words that have the same effect, perhaps in other languages? Only time will tell. Number three. The Strange Case of Kelvin Longwood Over the years there have been many missing persons cases, and many have vanished under mysterious circumstances, leading to cases that may never be solved. Very few cases, however, are as intriguing as the strange case of Kelvin Longwood. On Wednesday, May 5, 1982, 10-year-old Kelvin Longwood failed to come home from school. A neighbor who had been mowing his front lawn at the time noted that Kelvin did not get off the school bus when it stopped in front of his house. At first it was thought that he had simply missed the bus and decided to walk home, something he had been known to do previously. When he failed to show up, a search was launched for him. Kathy Wright, an 11-year-old classmate, reported that she saw him running east down Coolidge Boulevard. This was puzzling since it wasn't on his way home from school. At the time, no other clues were found regarding his whereabouts, and for decades Kelvin's fate remained unknown. Then, 35 years after Kelvin's disappearance, a body was found by workers excavating a construction site in Miami, Florida, nearly 1,000 miles from where Kelvin was last seen. Several artifacts found with the body suggested that it was connected to Kelvin, and forensic analysis of the body, including DNA testing of tooth pulp, confirmed that the body was indeed that of Kelvin Longwood. This coin was one of the artifacts found with the body. Kelvin was given a 1972 Philippine 50 centimo coin by an uncle on his eighth birthday. He cherished it because of their close relationship and because it was minted the year he was born. There is no way to prove that this is the same coin, but it was noted in flyers printed at the time of his disappearance that he was believed to have it with him. The cause of death seemed fairly clear. Injuries to the skull indicated a blow to the back of the head with a blunt instrument. However, due to several anomalies, the discovery actually raised more questions than it answered. This watch was one of the more curious artifacts found with the body. Though, like many young boys, Kelvin enjoyed watching football and participated in it on an informal basis, he was not known to be a Saints fan, nor to have ever owned such a watch. 
However, his social security number was crudely engraved on the back of it. A photograph of an infant girl was also found, leading to speculation about what connection she had with Kelvin. This photo, however, disappeared from the police crime lab. The most puzzling anomaly, however, was the overall condition of the body itself. It was determined that he was 22 to 23 years old at the time of his death, meaning that he lived longer after his disappearance than before. Was Kelvin a runaway, or was he being held all this time against his will? Recently, when clips from a 1989 Saints football game were rebroadcast, several viewers reported seeing someone resembling Kelvin in the crowd at the game. This would seem to tie in with the watch, but comparisons of age-progressed images of Kelvin, as he might have looked at the age of 17, to people in the crowd were not convincing. Number 4. Potassium Glutamic Hyperhydratic Acid Potassium Glutamic Hyperhydratic Acid, K4C5H904N-12HTO, aka PGHA, has some strange properties. Though it is similar to some substances used as flavor enhancers, it is mildly toxic and not used in food preparations. When metal objects are immersed in PGHA for several days, they swell to several times their original size, preserving the surface details. This has been used to make novelty coins which look identical to the original coins, but are several times the original size. Imagine a dime swollen to about twice the size of a quarter. Contaminants in the solution can cause bizarre results. This Indian head nickel, also known as a buffalo nickel because of the buffalo on the other side, not only swelled to ten times its original size, it also turned white and has all the appearance of being made out of soap. Number 5. The Dangla Tribe South America is well known for having isolated tribes with little contact with the outside world, such is the case with the Dangla Tribe. The Dengla have been isolated for a long time and have thus been a separate breeding population for a long time and are also small in number. Because of this there is little genetic variation within the group and though they have taboos against primary and secondary incest, it is difficult to find couples more distantly related than third or fourth cousins. Though they have little genetic variety overall, they have a surprising variety of hair colors. Aside from the more familiar black and brown hair, some individuals have green, blue, and even purple hair. Scientists have so far not been able to isolate the genes responsible for these bizarre pigments, but research is ongoing. Number 6. The Giant African Earthworm Recently a large earthworm was found that was about twice the size of any wild earthworm ever found in the UK. This worm, named Dave by its handlers, was a record setter for the UK, but some people, who obviously did absolutely no research, proclaimed that Dave was the world's largest or heaviest earthworm. At nearly 16 inches and weighing about an ounce, Dave may be impressive by UK standards, but in other parts of the world worms have been found that make Dave seem downright microscopic. Both South America and Australia can boast of worms over six feet long, but the king of giant earthworms is to be found in South Africa. Microhatus rapi, the giant African earthworm, averages about 4.5 feet when fully grown, but much larger specimens have been found, including one that was 22 feet long and weighed 3.3 pounds. Some of these monsters, when moving rapidly in their burrows, produce a loud gurgling sound that can be heard on the surface and has been compared to a large shower drain. Imagine you're walking along and hear a loud gurgling sound right underneath your feet. Then one of the locals says, ah, it's just one of those 22-foot earthworms. Somehow, I don't think that would be very reassuring. Number 7. Bat on the Moon Though vaccinations may spare future generations from the miseries of chickenpox, many people alive today can remember having it. One seldom reported but not particularly serious complication is an oddly specific visual disturbance commonly called a bat on the moon. 
It is actually an irregular, highly angular black shape seen when looking at a bright, round object such as a porch light or a bare light bulb. This usually happens at a stage in the disease when the patient is quite ill and is not likely to be engaging in activities where a lack of clear vision could be hazardous. Unlike the Batman logo that it has often been compared to, it is generally vertically rather than horizontally oriented. Number 8. Quimpledink. In the city of Elyria, Ohio, on May 4, 1987, a lot of graffiti appeared overnight featuring the mysterious word Quimpledink. Nobody seemed to know what the word meant or who was responsible, but it became more common over the next few months and then suddenly stopped appearing. It is believed that a single person was responsible for the initial occurrences and that subsequent examples were done by copycats. The motivation is uncertain, but some have suggested that the original writer, having heard the often repeated but clearly false folk etymology of the word quiz, decided to introduce a new word into the language by similar means. Though the word no longer appears in fresh graffiti, some older examples which were never erased can be found to this day and some Illyria residents still refer to a word of unknown meaning or origin as a quimpledink. Number 9. Rastukian Tongue Twister. Rastukian Tongue Twister is a simple but challenging game in which a player will draw a letter out of a cloth bag or large sock, then throw or kick an object such as a ball into the air, and say as many words as they can that begin with that letter before it hits the ground. More difficult letters such as Q, X, and Z have multipliers used to determine the final score. Whoever gets the highest score wins. In more formal settings, the words will be recorded and then a judge will play the recording back and verify each word using a dictionary. Both athletic skills and a good vocabulary are important for successful gameplay, with boys often being better at the former and girls often better at the latter. Since it is useful in both physical and intellectual development, it is popular at schools. The origin of the game and its name are not certain, though several stories have been advanced to explain it. Some say that it was named after the person who first invented it. Others claim that it was named after a city in Bulgaria where it was first played. But the most common explanation is that an early player made up the word Rastuk out of frustration when he couldn't think of more real words that started with R. Number 10. Yellow Sky. In the Midwestern era of the United States, a new designer drug was recently introduced with the popular name of Yellow Sky. It is a powerful hallucinogen and one almost universally reported effect is that the sensations of yellow and blue are switched as if the color sensors are temporarily rewired. This causes the user to see a certain bodily fluid is blue, while the sky appears to be yellow, hence the name yellow sky. The color switch ends when the drug wears off, but some users have reported a side effect that causes salty things to taste sweet, and this can persist for several weeks. This could be dangerous if it causes the affected person to consume excessive amounts of salt. The truly bizarre thing is that this chronic effect has been reported only among girls just starting puberty and slightly obese men over the age of 50. Researchers have been unable to determine why these two groups in particular would be affected this way. So there you have it. Nine lies and one fact. Can you solve the puzzle and separate the wheat from the chaff? If you want to try to figure this out on your own, you should do so before reading the comments, as they are likely to contain spoilers. Remember the Sherlock Holmes quote, Once you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains, no matter how improbable, must be the truth. I am calling this video number one because I am already working on number two. So if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Spread the word so others can enjoy it too.